Welcome back, my friends. Welcome back, me hearties. Welcome back to the gaming galleon. I'm Captain Rass. I just happen to be the captain of a pirate ship, and I happen to like video games. So what are you gonna do? Are you just gonna give up video games to adventure? Why not combine the two? Right? Think about it. There's plenty of room on a pirate ship. You don't just have to put barrels of, you know, uh, rum and uh, ropes and old sea dogs on there. Come on! Let's put Unlimited Saga for the PS2 on there! Come on! Let's put, like, a, a mini centipede that uh, has, like, an LED screen and you can't even see what's on it! Huh? What do you think? Should we do it? Let's do it. Captain Raz here. And it is my job, as your host, to take you to an exotic place somewhere in the world. Or beyond. And that's exactly what we can do here. You see, beyond the pirate ship, an old wooden galleon in which we sit, right in the middle of the captain's quarters, my little part of the ship. We also have the navigator. And the navigator is a very interesting little contraption that not only allows me to speak to you from somewhere in the world or beyond, but it also has the almost magical, inexplicable ability to isolate the location of a video game and spirit the ship itself to that location. Well, generally, I'll find a game and I will want the navigator to just take it. But I had a special show in mind. Okay? It's a certain time of year, but not the type of year, your th time of year you're thinking of if you're in the United States. I was actually in the mood to do a hunting show. Specifically, a hunting show in North America. And it was all because of the game I wanted to show to you today. Some of these voyages, the game fits the theme. But I wanted to build a whole show around the game. Let me show it to you, okay? It's right over here. It's been here the whole time. It's very small. And it happens to be about two American pastimes. Hunting and fishing. Or more specifically, as per the title, hunting and fishing. For the Game Boy Color today, we'll be playing Billy Bob's. Billy Bob's. Hunting and fishing by Midway. It's a game that we've found in lots before with far more interesting or high uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Reputation games. It's a game that you'll see in many retro stores for very, very little. In fact, it seems as if someone was trying to sell this one for $3.00 and 99 cents, which I think is a little high. We probably got it for less. <sighs> but as soon as I saw this game, uh, I definitely felt like the setting, and of course the company that made it, Midway, was worth celebrating. Because if you know anything about Midway, they happen to have a bit of a sense of humor. So, I didn't know what to think of this game, or what to make of it, but as soon as I found it in a lot years ago, I always thought, boy, we gotta check it out, right? We simply have to. Well, that's what we're gonna do. We're going to help Billy Bob in his plight, and we'll get into exactly what that is very soon. But it's interesting, I have to prepare 
some of these games for these voyages. We have to get to the proper point in which we should start and end, since there's only so much time, in a voyage. Only 60 minutes, in fact. Give or take. So it's important to find exactly where we don't want to be. We don't want to get stuck into some, you know, exposition-heavy cutscene. Right? Don't worry, there's not a lot of that in Billy Pop. Not exactly chatty in this game, alright? It's not a talkie, if you know what I'm saying. Anyway, Billy Bob is tasked with hunting for his girlfriend, Daisy May. And Daisy May has very... Eclectic tastes? First, she wants you to go and hunt some fish fish up some bass, so I do that. Then she wants to go and uh, have you hunt some rabbits. I go do that. Then she wants some catfish. You go pull some catfish out of the water. Then you gotta go and bullseye some raccoons. And then... Well, you're never gonna guess what Daisy May wanted next. That's right, you got it. What time of year is it? November? Late November in America? It's turkey. We're hunting turkey. Why is that a big deal? Well, if you're from the States, you know exactly why. Everybody's gunning for turkey in late November, thanks to Thanksgiving. Thanksgiving where the Indians and the pilgrims got together and sat down and broke bread. And turkey. But why turkey? Why was that such a big deal? Apparently, when the settlers got on land, the, the, the whole East Coast was teeming with them. Nothing but turkey. And a settler's got to do what a settler's got to do, which is eat. So they ate a lot of turkey. And Thanksgiving Day was no exception. <laughs> It's a big tradition for us now, but then they were just trying to get to the day. Okay? As the years went on, an expansion west occurred. More and more turkey got gunned down. And as the decades went on, and the Thanksgivings continued year after year, the turkey population suffered. Until finally in the 1930s, it was deemed that of the 38 states in the United States, 19 of them no longer had turkey. And it was counted around 30,000 of them. 30,000 gobblers were all that were left in the country. Well, what, what is a nation to do? We got a year, yearly tradition to keep up with. How are we going to fix this? Well, that's when the National Wild Turkey Federation was enacted. And they were put together for one thing, to repopulate the turkey population. How do you do that? Well, it was actually a pretty brilliant idea. They created something called the hunting license. And I gotta tell you, I never really thought much about what a hunting license was. You know, uh, I've never gone hunting. I've never really had the opportunity. And I'm not sure I'd be very good at it. So that's never come up. Do you need a license if you're just gonna go out with somebody for one day? I think you do. Especially, every, you need a license for everything now. I need a license to buy a Nintendo Switch. <sighs> Something about red tape out there. Anyway, they enact, they, they create these licenses, not to nickel and dime everybody, but to create fees that would then be, the funds would be used to create hunting seasons and regulations and enforce them, giving the turkeys time to repopulate. On top of that, the funds went toward hiring and paying biologists so they could better monitor the turkey population. So here we are a hundred years later from the 1930s when it was pretty tough to find a drumstick and today there's somewhere around six million gobblers out there for all of us to enjoy for Thanksgiving. 
How about that, huh? Pretty crazy stuff. But why Coffeeville, Alabama? Aren't there turkeys all over the place? There are. There's plenty of great places to hunt turkey. There's Montana. There's Maine. There's Nebraska. There's Mississippi. They're all at Florida. They're all over the place. But Alabama, I don't know if you knew this, is apparently the heart of turkey hunting. And why is that? Because the most legendary turkey hunter in history comes from little old forgotten Coffeeville, Alabama. A guy named Ben Rogers Lee. 300 pounds, always, always went hunting in tennis shoes and somehow had the ability to travel around the woods like a ghost. Truly, truly modern American folklore. Amazing stuff. Something about the guy, besides being an accomplished hunter, he had the ability to mimic the sound of a turkey better than anyone. Five-time turkey calling champion. World. World-class turkey calling champion. Now, I, I couldn't I'm not going to say that I obviously I, I got nothing. Okay, but I'll try my best to give you a turkey call if you happen to be out there and you see one of these suckers and you want to try and get them your way. Okay, let me try. It's actually quite addictive. It's like you, it's like the yo-yo. You feel like you're getting better every time you do it. Anyway, Ben Rogers Lee, serious business. He went around the country and would do seminars where he'd teach people how to turkey call. He was such a big deal that he got on the Tonight Show, the Today Show, Good Morning America. And this had to have been the crown jewel of his media exposure. He was on Hee Haw. Yeah. Whew. You know you've made it. You know you've made it if you're on Hee Haw. Yeah. Sadly. Sadly. The legends always live on, but sometimes the man does not. And in 1991, just a few minutes into... October 6th, in the middle of the night, Ben Rogers Lee, accomplished five-time world-class turkey-calling champion, died in a fiery car wreck. Whew. Only 46. And if you're at my ripe old age, that hits pretty hard. Because I'm uh, kind of in that neighborhood. In fact, I'm right across the street. So let's bag some turkey for old Ben Rogers, all right? Maybe our turkey call will come in handy. And we'll try and help Billy Bob. And again, Billy Bob's hunting and fishing for the Game Boy Color. Of course, we got the booty. That's coming up, all right? It's good stuff in there. I think you'll like it. And of course, we've got the mailbag down here. The bag that tells no tales where you find people out there take time out of your busy day to send me a letter. All right, let's get started. Where's the Harper transition? It's uh, Billy Bob's hunting and fishing. Let's bag some turkey. All right, here we go. So here's Billy Bob, okay? Billy, uh, you're showing your backside, pal. Come on, what are you doing? Turn around. Say hello to everybody. Billy May is, <laughs> Billy May. Billy Bob is uh, sitting outside of Daisy May's place, his betrothed. Daisy's always got something for our uh, buddy to do. 
let's see how she's doing. Maybe she'll say hi. Maybe she'll give us a kiss or something. Or more of that. All right, let's take a look. No. No. She's she's not having it. Daisy wants food. Okay. All right. Well, first thing we got to do, if we're going to bag turkey, we should get prepared. All right? We're going to be out there in the woods. So let's take in a little creature comforts before we get out there. All right? First thing we do here, we stop on in and prepare ourselves to hunt some turkey. All right, don't worry. I know the password, I think. It's uh, pig's head, uh, canoe, pig's head, canoe, uh, I think it's fish, and then finally, uh, old beer can. All right. Okay, hunting turkey. All right, we're good to go. Whew. That was close. It's all that. It, every, everything's fine now. It was uphill until that point, because if I didn't get that right... All right, so fishing is uh, over there in the west. We're not going to be doing any fishing. I don't think we're going to have time for that. So let's head right over to hunting because, you know, I'm curious what happens if I say hello to the raccoon. Nothing. All right, fair enough. Clean up that litter. We've got three chances, as you can see down there, those three hearts down there. We've got three chances to bag some turkey for uh, um, Daisy May. So we need to get prepared. Over in the lodge, we'll have everything we need. Everything that a hunter needs to hunt turkey. Let's get in there. Howdy! Daisy was saying she loves some turkey. All right, well, let's see if we can help her with that. First thing we need to do is we need to get some ammo. Okay, all right. All right, shoot a turkey. And get, get a bullet. Shoot something else and you lose a bullet. All right, got it. Turkey, right? Turkey. Okay. okay. Now I like to sit over here and just wait. So that I can have, oh, there's the turkey. I saw it. I haven't gone hunting for turkey yet, so who knows what's in store for us. Probably not much. Do you have this in your Game Boy Color? Do you want it in your Game Boy Color? You could be playing this at the, at the dinner table for Thanksgiving. I mean, it beats, uh, you know, anecdotes from Grandpa. Oh, boy. All right, that's two. Turkey. Three turkey. No, I missed that one. Okay. We only got 20 seconds to get as many bullets as we can here, so we better make this count. That is one fast turkey. Oh, my God. Stop. Come this way. Yeah, uh, oh, that was close. I got him. Okay. Nine, eight, seven, six, five, four. One more turkey. Come on. Two, one. All right, five bullets. Is that going to be enough? He seems happy about it. I can only hope so. All right. Fair enough. Okay. Uh, next thing we got to do is we got to get a, a license, right? We were talking about hunting licenses. Well, Billy's not just going to get out there. Or, or at least, uh, you know, he doesn't want to. So we better earn a license, okay? To get... Get... A hunting license. You gotta... Oh my god, the grammar here is killing me. You gotta shoot 12 turkey. If you hit something else... You lose. All right? Okay. Just turkey. Okay. Oh, that was a turkey. Turkey! Okay. Okay. Turkey! Oh, I missed him. Turkey! Got him. Right by the outhouse. Got him! Okay. Okay. Come on, why would I play Lunar on the Game Boy Color when I have this? You kidding me? Halfway there. 27 seconds. I don't even want to talk, because if I blow it, if I shoot the wrong thing, it's all over. You need that license, dude. We don't want to be poaching. 10 seconds. Oh my 
go. We got it. <laughs> I was really worried about that. You only get you only get one shot at that. You only get one shot at that. Okay. Whew. All right. Billy has his license. We're ready to hunt turkey. We're ready to hunt turkey just in time. Although we do need to do one more thing. We're going to be going out there hunting for turkey. You don't want to be downwind and them catching your scent. All right? So it's very important that we prepare by taking a bath. You can get clean out back, but don't let the pigs in the water or you'll stink more than when you began. Okay? Let's get in the water. Oh, Billy. Oh, Billy, you realize you're live, right? Oh my god, no! Oh my god. I can't believe I blew that. Can I take another bath? Is that possible? Let me let me take one more bath, please. Come on. A hunter ought to go hunting instead of taking baths all the time. That's tragic. Okay, well, fair enough. Fair enough. We'll leave it there for now. Okay? We'll leave it there for now. We've got our hunting license. We've got some ammo. Alright? Sadly, we're probably going to be uh, smelling like, I don't know, what do you think Billy Bob smells like? I don't know, I couldn't tell you. Anyone see my hat? What do you think? Chewing tobacco, maybe? Carburetor oil? Is there oil in a carburetor? <laughs> alright, alright. Well, we're at the bottom of the hour. And so what that means during a gaming galleon voyage is we get to dig in to the chest. Alright? What pirate ship would be complete without a chest full of booty? Right? Alright. It's hunting season. And as you can see, we have some of the many. And this is far from all the things that were sitting in the pirate ship as far as uh, light guns. All right, they're all over the place on the galleon, okay? I had to be choosy. But as you can see, we have some of them floating around. And we have more of them. Oops. That's my controller. We have more of them. Some of the more exotic ones sitting in the chest that I really think we should take a look at. Okay? Let's start from the beginning. Let's start at, like, the absolute primordial level of uh, processing power you can get. Okay? And we'll work our way up. We found this for a dollar. Who knows when? I have no idea, okay? It says here a dollar, 99 cents. It's the Buckmaster's Deer Hunting. The Buckmaster's Deer Hunting. Okay? It's a handheld video gaming system. And luckily, there's an orange tip so that no one can try and hold up a convenience store with it. Uh, there is a control deck on, on the front there. And as you can see, there's a kind of map of sorts. And there's even a scope. So you can go hunting even at the Thanksgiving dinner table. All right. So I think if I press sound slash game on, it should turn on. Okay. Did you hear the sound? I heard a beep. Uh, new game slash call. Okay. Oh, top scores. Should we see if there's a top score? I can't even see this thing. Uh, who knows? Could we really play this thing? I, I don't know. But I'll tell you what, 
just toying around with it is pretty funny stuff. Uh, you'd be shocked the level of, of trouble they went to make this a visceral interactive experience. Case in point. You've got that little forest there, right? Okay, check this out. If I turn this dial, it allows you to change geographical areas and look for deer in different places. And as you do that, there is a little LED compass that gives you an idea as to which map you should be starting on. From there, there's a little dot, and you move the dot around the map, okay? Meanwhile, meanwhile, you have to have your gun ready, and that's way more than just the trigger, which is interactive. On the scope, it'll tell you what you need to do. And generally, there are two things you do need to do with your gun. For one, <laughs> you have to make sure that if you're going to fire at something, that you turn the safety off. Okay. This is a live round, everybody! Careful! The safety's off! Don't aim it at anything unless you're going to kill it! Now that the safety is off, it has told me that. And now I can fire. Oh, but it's not firing, is it? No. That's because I haven't... ...cocked it. <laughs> uh, it's interactive. Alright, 99 cents. There you go. Have fun with that. Top scores! Top scores! In the 8-bit department, moving up from whatever that would be classified as to the 8-bit department, we have this sucker. Okay? It's like a Chinese plug-and-play. What's that got to do with guns? It's got, you know, Famicom on there. What's on there? Devil's World? What am I going to play, uh, you know, Karateka on this thing? What, 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 what Famicom games are on it? Who cares? What's Super Mario Hacks on there? Well, there's more to it than the controller. And there's more to it than just a Famicom and Nintendo clone controller-based games. You guessed it. This plug-and-play can also play light gun games. <laughs> yeah, uh-huh, full-on gun. Let's unravel it for you. You've got the second player controller plugged into the stock, okay? If we unravel the AV cable and the controller, what's on this controller here? No shoulder buttons. I'm noticing here, four face buttons. Okay. You ready to see the player one controller? Here's here, here's if you want to shoot. You want to play, uh, I don't know, gumshoe. And here's if you decide you want to play kung fu. Finally, I will beat every speed run in the world. This technology will take me farther than anyone has reached. Finally. What do we have here? You got four face buttons. I assume these are all Nintendo games. I'm pretty sure they... I haven't plugged this thing in years. Uh, three buttons in the middle and an N64 analog stick. Is that working? My God, it is. That's awful. There's a trigger here. Okay. Ready for that? All right. Um, on, off. There's... <laughs> This says uh, on, off, and there's a third setting, one. 
On, off, and one. I'm not sure what one would be. Maybe that's for light gun? Who knows? Uh, and then finally, uh, the power. You gotta, you gotta, you gotta power this thing up somehow, right? Where does the power go into? What, well, what's this for? That's for your Ford double-A batteries. Okay. There you go. Yeah. You ready for action? I kind of want to plug this in and see what games are on it. That will never happen. All right. What's next? Moving up the line. Let's see about the 32-bit era. All right. 32-bit era. You know, there are a lot of light guns out there for the 32-bit era, more specifically PlayStation 1 and Sega Saturn, right? Finally, one that gives you the option to play both, okay? There are quite a few of these out there, so that's not anything crazy. And there's nothing particularly uh, innovative or off the wall with this one, save the name. It's a, a beautiful jet black. No uh, orange tip, by the way. But take a look at the look. What are these uh, options here? You got uh, normal auto fire, of course. Okay, reload speed. Feels like a nice trigger. Check out the name of this sucker. It may not be the most interesting, but easily the coolest name. It's the Judge Dread. And even better, it's the Judge Dread 3. <laughs> I don't know what this came with. I'm kind of curious. Was this like... Was this what? Was this an independent uh, gun? And this is a little label here. Let's see. It says, uh, Made in China. Estelle International. Never heard of them. So yeah, there's a good chance this sucker was just put out just... Uh, to get in in a time crisis and uh, point blank market, but uh, she's looking pretty slick. She's looking pretty slick, and it's pretty awesome that this sucker's for the Sega Saturn. So yeah, the Judge Dread Three. Awesome. All right, moving up to the 128-bit era. 128-bit era. We found this sucker for a big fat dollar. They were asking for three at one point. No one was buying. But this sucker right here was more than willing to take it for a buck. It is a very strange looking original Xbox controller by Mad Cats. Easily, easily inspired by Halo. Specifically the Covenant weapons. Take a look at this guy. It is entitled the Blaster. By Mad Cats. Green. Pretty neat design here. Again, they were asking $2.99. We're not paying $2.99! We're paying a dollar! Alright? I'm not even sure I'll give you the tax for it. Got that big old fat X nice, nice cord. Xbox One always, Xbox original Xbox always took care of you. Nice big fat purple lavender plug for whatever reason. Okay. All right, there you go. Oh, oh, this is a nice touch. It has a little analog stick there. And you know, this is a good grip. I could see that being, I could see that being pretty, pretty effective. You've got some buttons on the side. Those seem like they'd be hard to find. Although the start and select, look at where they put those. That's kind of neat. So I guess I guess you'd be if you do that. It's actually quite good. It's right there. You could easily be pressing those. Good stability using this with two hands. Yeah, it's not bad. House of the Dead three, anybody? So another button here. Interesting. Interesting. Very well designed, actually. I'm not sure how how exciting it looks. But, yeah, I'm actually quite impressed with the design of this. Not bad. All right. Now that I get, like, the 30 feet of cable off it. Don't worry. We have some heavy ar artillery for you. Some artillery that uh, couldn't fit in the chest. Oh, 
Okay. Take a look at this guy. We're getting into the modern era here. Or at least as modern as we get. Take a look at this sucker. <laughs> I don't even remember. I have no idea what we paid for this. This couldn't have been more than like... I'd say three dollars. I think I might have been willing to pay three on this. I don't know. I doubt it though. For all I know, this is probably something they were giving away. Pawn shops will do that because these things are so big and bulky. They don't want them sitting around. That will happen now and then. I'm not sure if that's the case here, but who knows? What is this for? Can you even guess? Take a look at the, the barrel. What are you thinking? PlayStation Move? Reasonable, but usually they pop the Move controller in there. No, well, that's not what it's for. If we look at the bottom here, it says controller for Xbox 360 sensor. I assume this is like for Cabela or something. I don't know. Does this even work on its own? I guess you'd need a connect for this. What a useless piece of crap. I, there's no way I paid anything for this. I hope not. Anyway, uh, if you need to mount it, okay. You need to get some stability there. I'm getting you. I'm getting you, Wizard of War. I can't, I can't get it. Um, interesting. The most interesting thing about this is, is I was pulling it out of the hold and bringing it up here to the captain's quarters to present to you. Uh, I, I just naturally put my, my hand like this, and that makes sense to put it there and your thumb there. But then I realized. You know, this uh, thumb piece seems interactive. And uh, so I pulled it, and uh, this happened. So you can load it. What do you load it with? Uh, batteries. <laughs> There's a little... A little locking mechanism here that opens up. Pop your batteries in there, okay? Of course you're shooting with batteries. It's a light gun. Of course you are. Pro tip for the uh, no one who will get this. Uh, be careful when you do that because you can detach it completely and it can drop on the ground and then uh, this can happen. Oh, bogus. I guess we're shooting from the hip, huh? Ouchie, wouchie. Anybody got any Gorilla Glue? Finally. Oh. And there is, there is a stock extender. Okay. Right, we're good to go. Okay. All right. Beautiful. We'll never use it. Okay. Moving on to our final piece of artillery. It's the same era as the Xbox 360, but it is so much more than a gun. Some would argue that it's a piece of art. Check this out. As you look at it, try and tell me. What console could this possibly, possibly belong to? What do you think, Xbox 360? PlayStation 3? Were there any other systems from that era? 
Was Neo Geo making a console back then? Atari Lynx. Did they put out it? Put out Atari Lynx during those guys? It's a Nintendo Wii controller. Pretty obvious. I mean, look at the color. Look at the sleekness. But the fact that the Wiimote is designed to be in there so that you can press it with this button, put your thumb there. <laughs> and the most fascinating thing about this thing is putting it together. And it's also the most challenging. Uh, I put a black nunchuck in there merely so that you could see where the controller starts and the peripheral ends. You can also see a black wire which connects the nunchuck to the Wiimote. And that control, that, that cord is up here. Look at that. And then it feeds back down from the stock into the barrel and the shaft to connect to the Wii. I'm not sure how effective this thing would be. I'm not even sure what game it's for. <sighs> Who's to say? But if anything, it's sleek, consort. Once you've managed to get it all together, it's pretty sturdy. I'm, I'm just questioning how truly effective it would be. Spe mainly because, you know, the Wii mode is sideways here. Aren't like most gun games for the Wii, like, using a TV controller? Like, the A button's supposed to be facing the ceiling. Here it's, you know, facing the front door. So, I don't know how that would come into play. I... I assume whatever game this was made for, it's effective enough. And I know we didn't pay anything for this. I know we got this again in a budget, like a tub, tub at a pawn shop. Like, please, we don't know what this is. It's plastic. Get it out of here. How can we leave it behind? All right. That's it. Okay, choose thy weapon and choose it wisely because we only got five bullets and we reek like the high heaven as we go out into the field and try and hunt turkey for our dear sweet Daisy May. Let's return to Billy Bob's hunting and fishing. And we've been playing the Billy Bob's music the entire time. All right, moving on. Okay, where were we? <laughs> where is, uh, here it is. This is my controller. Okay, here we go. Oh, okay. All right, so where were we? We had the license. And we have the ammo. Sadly, we couldn't take a bath. We couldn't get the pigs out of the river long enough for us to wash up. So hopefully the turkeys don't smell us coming. Let's head out of there to the field and try and bag a couple gobblers. All right, here we go. All right, so she wants three turkeys. I don't know what family would need three turkeys. I have no idea. But let's get started. Okay. Alright, so luckily we do have an ATV. Uh, sadly, it is only at half a tank of gas. So we're going to have to keep an eye out for turkey. We can get out. And luckily, we do have our license. One of these days, I'm going to catch you without a license, Billy Bob. 
I don't know why I feel like everyone in this game holds their vowels so long. Let's continue. I, I'm noticing that there's a gauge here now with a skunk next to it. Oh, look. There's a turkey. Behind that car. Got him! Yes! Yes! Ah! Oh, feels good. Okay. We only need two more. To be honest, I wonder what's in that hole. Can we go in there? No. If there's one thing you don't want when you're out here, it's to go out here without a license. Because that, that fat cop will be on you like white on rice. He is all over you. Luckily, though, he can't touch us today. Okay? The only thing keeping us back is our, our smelly, smelly body. I won't get into details as to how I think Bob, Billy Bob got so smelly. Here's some toxic waste. Coffeeville, Alabama, ladies and gentlemen. Let's get my hand. Okay. Right. okay. Just driving around. There's a car that's in the muck. Maybe we should go on foot. Maybe maybe the, the car is is too loud. What do you think? Oh, here we go. Got him! Yes! Oh, I can't believe how well this is turning out. <sighs> He's going to be really proud to have that over his mantle. All right, one more. I'm not, I'm not doing the car. We're just going to walk around. I feel like the car... Too loud. We'll just we'll leave the ATV there. We'll leave it up to leave it up to luck. We're getting smelly though. They're beginning to pick up our scent. This is not good. Come on, come on, turkeys. Come on, little turk alert. Should I try the call? Let me try the call. I forgot how to do it. Is it was this it? Are the, you seeing any turkeys? Damn it. Alright. This is a long shot. Come on, one turkey, please. Please. Have you seen a turkey, sir? Have you seen Turk Alert? Turk Alert me, please. Please, Turk Alert me. Come on. Oh my god, get out of here. Kidding me? Three ninety nine at your local retro store. There's a turkey. Oh my god! It was too loud. Oh, damn it. Okay, that's it. It's all shit. That's it. Daisy May is going to have to be happy with two turkeys! Put some raccoon on the table. We got enough of that. All right. We're rounding out the end of the show here. And in the tradition of old variety shows of old, I always like to devote a little time to you the very gracious viewing public a little time to throw something into the mailbag. Maybe write me a letter, maybe a question about the world, gaming, or beyond, and I'll do my best to answer it. Okay? Let's take a look and see what you out there have sent the old gaming. Sitting in the bag that tells no tales here. Let's see what we got. 
All right. Well, uh, it's a beer. To simpler times, my friend. To simpler times. Well, whoever sent the beer, thank you. It's delicious. We're a little short on time, though. Not exactly uh, a talkie, you know. Not exactly a, a ballad here. So as we wrap up, allow me to leave you with one more legend. One more story about the legendary five-time turkey caller, Ben Rogers Lee, who sadly left us far too short. One day in Texas, Ben Rogers Lee was on his stomach staring down a turkey in the bush. Just behind him was his best friend, also on the trip. Baxter. Franklin Baxter. <sighs> Franklin was being quiet, as was Ben. Didn't want to scare off the turkey, being very still. But as Ben shimmied slowly, he unsettled the surrounding bush enough to perturb a southern slithering snake. The snake, as Franklin Baxter witnessed, struck our friend and hero, Ben Rogers Lee. <laughs> it must be the simpler times. <laughs> Through his pants and directly into his backside. Well, upon witnessing this, Franklin Baxter simply had to speak up, and he said to his friend, Ben Rogers Lee, uh, Ben, I think you've just been bit by a rattlesnake. And Ben, still locked on to the turkey, said to his friend, Franklin Baxter, Well, This turkey is going to die before I do. And squeeze the trigger. The turkey falls. Ben gets up, takes his prize in one hand and a stick in the other and backtracks to the position of the rattlesnake and jabs thusly. The rattlesnake, leaving this plane of existence, now dead. Ben Rogers Lee grabs it and stuffs it into his turkey vest so that he can verify exactly the kind of snake that caught him in the rear end. Baxter and Ben move on to the hospital and as they walk in a nurse approaches and says how can I help you Ben Rogers Lee says I got bit by a rattlesnake when the nurse asks how exactly he knows it's a rattlesnake well Ben digs his hand into his turkey vest and pulls it out when he tries to hand the snake to the nurse, she predictably stumbles back, turns tail, runs out the room ye yelling for a doctor, THIS MAN'S BROUGHT A SNAKE IN THE HOSPITAL! As we said earlier, 
some men pass on, but legends, legends always live on. I want to thank you for joining us today. I hope everyone has a nice Thanksgiving or a nice dinner if you're outside of the States, you know, whenever that may be. I'm not sure when we're going to see each other again. And I certainly am not sure where. It could be Transylvania. It could be Australia. It could be in a galaxy far beyond this place. I'm not sure when, and I'm sure not sure where. But I'm sure of one thing. Wherever we end up next, and wherever we go, we're going to go there together. So until next time, my friends. Oh, uh, well, and adieu to ye fair Spanish maidens. Allow me to get that Billy Bob music off. It's off! Well, I don't know, do ye ladies of Spain, for we received orders for to bag us some turkey. And lo, nevermore shall we see ye. Oh, Gadden, keep your turkey dry, meaties. <laughs>